Let's examine the album Slides by Richard Harris. Okay, so this is a bargain bin album by Richard Harris called Slides. Uh, it's from 1972. I'm just going to show you. So what you have is a clear plastic to represent what a slide. So the album is designed like a slide. If you've ever seen um, slides or in the slideshow, and yeah, this looks just like a slide with a picture in the middle that you put in the machine to project on the wall. Sorry, some people might know what a slide is. And then in the back, there's going to be the track list. And then a bunch of slides with some kind of explanation here. I'm going to um, refer to those later. Here is the album. It's on this Dunhill ABC Records which I, I haven't seen before. Okay, so Richard Harris, um, of course, is a, a pretty famous actor. He was nominated for the Academy Award uh, for Best Actor twice. I'm not gonna go through his acting career, um, but he had a really long career in film. And uh, his last role was as Albus Dumbledore in the Harry Potter films, the second Harry Potter film, of course. He couldn't finish the series. How I know Harris as a singer is he did uh, a version of MacArthur Park in 1968, and I've always really disliked that version. I mean, I can listen to it, but I'm not a fan of it. And so when I saw this album, um, I decided to give him another try, right? I'm not gonna judge a singer based on one song. So I wanted to listen to this with open ears. And so then um, I went ahead and listened to it, and I, you know, I really, really enjoyed it. This is gonna be an album that I'm gonna highly recommend if you like singer-songwriters. All right, let me give you a little bit of background. So on a TV special, he told Bert, Bert Bacharach that since he's not a trained singer, he approached songs as an actor concerned with words and emotions, acting the song with the sort of honesty that the song is trying to convey. I thought that was really interesting. The two previous albums he did, he worked a lot with Jimmy Webb, but Jimmy Webb is not on this album at all. In fact, Almost every song is written or co-written by, oh yeah, you can see on the inside flap. So almost every, like if you see, you can see it says T. Romero, T. Romero. So this is Tony Romero, all until we get to the last track and we're gonna talk about that. So Tony Romero um, wrote or co-wrote all but one song. He also played on this album. I think he produced it. And he's really uh, best known for his hit that he wrote for the Partridge Family. I Think I Love You. It was a great song. This is almost a Tony Romero solo album, right, that Richard Harris sings. Except Richard Harris does write one song. He writes the last song, and it's actually a poem. There are too many saviors on my cross. And I was actually pretty moved by this poem. Every time I listen to it, I, I become engaged. Even though he's not singing it, he's he's kind of uh, it's kind of like spoken word, but there is orchestration in the background. Um, it's really engaging. The lyrics are good. I would recommend that if nothing else, you listen to this song. Okay, called uh, "There Are Too Many Saviors on My Cross." And then, if you want to get another kind of feel for the album, you could listen to the one called "Slides." Now, this is the song where he basically narrates a trip that he made, I think, I'm guessing, right? So he goes on this trip and he takes all these slides, you know, basically pictures, and you can hear in the song, the slide machine going from slide to slide and he narrates each one. And it's actually really beautiful. Now I was surprised that Harris didn't also write this one because it, it's kind of in the same vein of the last song, There Are Too Many Saviors on My Cross, but Tony Romero actually uh, wrote wrote this one. So as a singer, does he do a good job? Yes, he does. Okay, so he's an actor. Of course, we're going into this knowing he's an actor. His singing is very smooth, very subtle, very nice, but then he can also build and he belts. And now he's not the perfect belter, but he doesn't have problems. So we're gonna listen to two clips. One where he belts out and you can hear it and yeah, he's not an opera singer, but he does it with emotion. And so I really got into it. I thought, hey, you know, that's totally fine because he kind of yells it out with emotion. 
And then there's another, the second clip we'll hear is where he is belting out, uh, but the orchestra kind of covers over it. Cause I knew right then that I would be your lover. Um, you get an, uh, you get a sense of when he's like really strong, but he also sings um, very softly and smoothly throughout the album. He does tell some stories. Some of them are corny, but you know what? If you if you give the album a chance, I think you'll enjoy it. Okay, so my final thoughts on this album, Slides. I highly recommend it. I would say that if you like singer-songwriters of the 70s, this is an absolute must. You really need to listen to it. If you're just dipping your toes into pop, and maybe it's a three out of five. There's going to be some high points and low points for you. But in my opinion, I, I enjoyed the entire album. I don't think there's a bad song on it. Yeah, some of the songs, like I, I mentioned, might be hokey or goofy. The reason I say that is because whenever someone is, you know, telling a personal story, then other people might, you know, not might not be into that story and might not appreciate that story but if there are other people who have been through similar circumstances they'll highly appreciate that story so i'm saying if you find this for a dollar or even three dollars or under this is an absolute must buy purchase not only for the gimmick cover right because that's actually pretty cool um but for the the orchestrations and the the lyrics and then for especially for these last two songs slides and the poem there are too many saviors on my cross so if you enjoyed this video would you please like and subscribe and then you could listen to uh in-depth review of two recent albums that i did